Hey guys, Dave here. I want to give you a quick tip in order to process the effects within your project uh, to a WAV file that are really going to help save on CPU usage within your DAW. That's coming up on Home Music Studio One. Hey guys, Dave here. Uh, welcome back. I, I want to show you a very quick tip. This will be simple and easy, but a very helpful resource for you. I'm going to demonstrate in Reaper, but this is going to work in virtually any DAW that you are using. Might be a little different, but the concept is the same. I want to show you how you can actually process uh, effects that you've used on any given track into uh, a new WAV file in your project, thus saving on computer resources. And so uh, I'll demonstrate that in just a minute, but here's the reason we would want to do that. Go ahead and go to View and Performance Meter within Reaper. One thing I like about Reaper is it shows me uh, everything that's happening with my machine here. And so I can see my total CPU usage uh, as well as my RAM and all that for system. I can also uh, see what is happening on each individual track and how much each track is using for CPU. And so I'm working on this project here. I've actually just uh, cut the, the vocal track. Uh, I'm not going to show you that right now. That's still in progress, even though I just cut that on. They're still processing that. I want to let you hear a portion of this project. And uh, what I want you to pay attention to is how much CPU usage we're using. We want to look at this number up here. And then we're going to focus on maybe zeroing in on a track or two within the project that tends to be using some uh, higher resources than others. And I'll show you how to use this tip to lessen the amount of resources that are being used. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And let's pay attention to our CPU and the rest of our tracks here. So if, hopefully you noticed that, but we had several times where our CPU actually spiked up there real close and in, in, in a few times there to that 50% range, okay? And so um, this is a good size project. You can see I've got 74 effects that I'm processing. Uh, I have a total of 53 tracks. To be fair, some of them are placeholder tracks and uh, that would be tracks uh, like this here that is basically just giving me uh, an area to uh, define where uh, groups of tracks are. But that includes AUX tracks that I'm using, tracks I'm using as bus mixes and so on and so forth. So uh, I've, I've, this is a, a typical project that I would build size-wise uh, in Reaper. And so uh, even though Reaper is still very efficient on CPU, I've definitely got a few tracks that I think could be doing better. And that's really gonna help me as I continue to build the rest of this project out. Still got a couple more uh, effects that I need to process here in my post-production. So I'm going to go ahead and down and let's listen and zero in on what is happening in this piano track right here. Now this is, uh, I'm using the virtual instrument from xlnaudio.com. This is Addictive Keys. This is actually a free plugin. You can download this. And then I'm also using the Strip Bus plugin. This was about 30 American dollars. So uh, pretty affordable. This just emulates uh, console emulation, analog console emulation. Those are the only two things in this track. This is a MIDI source file. I recorded this by taking the output of my MIDI controller, plugging that into my Scarlet 2i4, which is what I recorded this project with. Uh, and my settings are 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. Okay, just so you know where we're at. So this is a MIDI source file. What I want to do is I'm going to right click on this MIDI source file. And I'm going to go up to apply track effects to item as new take. Now, your DAW might be different than mine if you're not using Reaper. And so your option may say something to the effect of process uh, effects or apply effects to track. Uh, hopefully you might even have the option of apply tra effects to new track. Uh, if your DAW does not have the ability like Reaper to actually create a new take, uh, simply just create a duplicate track of the, the track that you want to do this on and then apply the effects to one of those and that'll allow you to save the effects uh, to the original. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this MIDI source again and apply track effects to item as new take. Now what this is doing is it's processing the virtual instrument 
as well as that strip bus plugin. Uh, it's processing the settings I've had and rendering those as a brand new WAV file. But then it's going to give me access to the original MIDI source file that I've created as well as this new WAV file. So the key here is I don't want to lose the ability to process any, make any changes that I need to this track in the future, but I want to lessen the load of CPU processing for this track. And that's what this tip is going to do. So uh, as that's done being processed, what we're going to be left with is the original MIDI source. Now we have a new WAV file that is a copy of the processed effects now to this track. Now, so when I play this back, I don't want to then continue to process these two effects because we've just applied them in a rendered version this way. So what I'm going to do is just disable the effects. So in the future, if I ever want to make any changes, all I have to do is uh, arm this uh, MIDI source as the active file. I can enable my effects again and then make a change. Uh, I can actually go down to the wave. I can right click on that if I wanted and go up to take and then delete active take, and that puts me back exactly where I started, okay? Right now I'm gonna undo that, make sure that this guy is active, disable the effects. Now let's go ahead and open our performance meter back up, and let's see what difference we may have made on CPU usage. Remember that piano in several spots were pushing really close to 4% usage. Let's see what we've got now going on uh, with how much that piano is gonna use within this project. So we've actually had a several percentage jump, okay? Uh, this organ right here has got a really good long sustain to it. Uh, several percentages we've just saved on CPU usage for this track alone. Now we can do this as many times as is appropriate. Uh, if you've got tracks, you know, such as our Toms that you've done some tweaking on and they're ready to go for the most part, you don't want to make a whole lot of changes. You can do this for as many tracks as you need and save quite a bit on CPU. Let me do it one more to this organ file right here. I'm going to right click on the MIDI source and uh, simply select apply track effects to item as new take. And while it's doing that, I should point out that you can apply this. You can do this to a WAV file just as much as you are MIDI source. Uh, the only reason I'm picking the MIDI source files is these, uh, the VSTIs that I'm using in this case, the Alpha Free Lin Plug, as well as the Strip Bus, uh, are using a little more CPU resources than what is happening in my WAV files. All right, so now that that's processed, we've got our original MIDI source. We now have a new WAV file that is the processing of those effects, the virtual instrument. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. And now let's take another listen. I'm gonna open our performance meter and let's see what kind of difference now we may be making uh, saving those resources there on the organ track. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Bottom line is we're definitely making a drastic difference with the amount of CPU we are using. Uh, as I said, you can do this to any track within your project that is appropriate. And once you get a, a decent amount of your processing done in your post-production phase, this is a good way uh, to make sure that your audio stays clean and you're not pushing your system right to the edge of its limit, and especially in large projects. And again, if you're not using Reaper, uh, you can do this just by making a duplicate copy of a track process your effects to one of those tracks and then disable the effects on your copy and then mute it and that way you'll have it stored there just in case you need it but you're not using cpu to to process those effects live so hey guys hopefully this has been helpful uh, if you've got any more questions on this tip uh, make sure to leave a comment and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and do that also if you haven't yet joined us in the online community you can do that as well you can get more free tips exactly like this one by heading on over to freerecordingtools.com drop your name and uh, your email on that list 
and that'll sign you up for my free affordable home recording tips newsletter. I'll send you a free copy of my ebook entitled Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. That's a very popular uh, ebook. I've got a lot of great response from that. So hopefully we'll see you there on that list. Again, freerecordingtools.com. And until next time, this is Dave Maxey with Home Music Studio One. <music>